Yo, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be replacing the radiator in my 2000 Jeep Cherokee here. This has the four liter with an automatic, but if you have a manual four cylinder Jeep, it's a pretty straightforward job. Just look down in there, start unbolting stuff. Pretty easy to figure out. So this should be a nice short video. Let's get into it. First thing to do is start getting stuff off of the radiator or things that are going to be in our way, like the air box. Just pop this breather hose off, get the clamp off of the throttle body, take off the top, take out the air filter. Then there's some half inch bolts holding in the air box. You might have three or you might have one like me. We'll get the overflow hose off of the, uh, the top of the radiator here. Just a hose clamp on that. And then I'm not sure how this was secured factory, but mine's zip tied. With that hose out of the way, we can get the electric fan out. You can unplug it. And then there's a couple eight millimeter bolts holding it on. And then lift the fan out. And mine is not going back in. Something broke, this right here broke. Now you might have a shroud over your mechanical fan or your clutch fan right here, which is probably secured by eight millimeter bolts. Take that off too. Now we're ready to drain the coolant out of this thing. And there's actually two ways to go about doing this. Factory, I think the drain is, a uh, little drain plug is on the driver's side of a factory radiator. But I actually did this radiator a few years back and my drain is right here. What I would recommend is follow your lower radiator hose, follow it into your water pump and take it off at the water pump and you'll get a lot more of the coolant out and hopefully make less of a mess. The lower hose on the water pump is gonna have one of these tension clamps on here. So we're gonna try and get some channel locks in there. I might have to totally block your view. Move that out of the way. Reckon I'll take this cap off and we'll go ahead and make a mess. Oh, yep. Oh, the GoPro. Now, if you have an automatic, we have a couple extra steps. You're gonna need a lined disconnect set like this. You're gonna need the 3 8 one specifically. And that's for this lower uh, trans cooler line. And the way these work, you're just gonna push this collar into the fitting, slip it over the line like that, and then you're just gonna push it, end of it, and it should pop it out. If you want, you can use a wrench to help yourself out a little bit. There it is. And then over here on the bottom of the radiator, we have some mounting points, one of which is a zip tie for me. Oh no, both of them are zip ties. I'm not sure what's here from factory, but there's some kind of bracket holding on this upper cooler line. And then for the upper line, that's actually threaded in with a uh, three quarter inch collar right here. And then a 15 16 on the back there to hold it. As you can see, some transmission fluid came out. Um, it didn't come out of the hose. It was still in the transmission cooler. It came out right here. Just keep that in mind. Be prepared to um, check your transmission level after the job's done and add some if you need it. So now we're good to move on to the radiator shroud here, getting these bolts off. To get the shroud off on the driver's side, we got three 10 millimeter bolts. And then across the front here, facing back, we got four of them, also 10 millimeter. Two on the driver's side. Then two on the passenger side, same thing. And then this bolt is shared with a bracket for the battery hold down. So we'll just loosen that up, just spin that out of the way. Then the battery's in the way here, so I'll just use a ratcheting wrench to get that last bolt off. Now you shouldn't have this issue here. Uh, these are all my winch wire connections. So I'm hoping I can just flip the bracket up and just kind of set it out of the way instead of taking it out completely. So we'll see what happens with that. And you kind of have to pull it back away from the grill because of the studs. Oh, I'm a fool. I forgot because one of mine broke off, but there's, there's a nut here and there's supposed to be one right here. Now we should be free. Like I said, hopefully I can just kind of swing this out of the way like that. Now the shroud's out of the way. Um, if you have air conditioning, your AC condenser will be held in right here at the front of your radiator. This nut was just finger loose, pops right off. And then that side is missing it completely. So that's free. Another thing is these rubber uh, spacers will have to come off and get transferred to your new one. Two eight millimeter bolts on each side. And then the last thing to do is get the upper radiator hose off. I just have a regular hose clamp in there. So either put a flat head down there, or a 516. Oh, that was an eight millimeter actually. Tuck that out of the way. The lower hose, I'm just gonna leave attached because I think there's still some coolant, yep, in there. And if I pull it off right here, we're just gonna make more of a mess. So I'm gonna try and get this out the best I can and keep this as high as I can. 
All right, let's try to fish this thing out. There's nothing holding it from the bottom. You should just be able to pop it right out. I'm trying to keep the driver's side higher. Out it comes. Just to show you real quick before we put the new one in, how I was saying that uh, nothing holds it from the bottom. There's dowel pins on the bottom of the radiator, one on each side. It's again shared with the uh, AC condenser. You just make sure that tab's lined up. And then one dowel pin goes in right there on this side, and then passenger side, same exact thing. All right, here's our new unit here. It's a full metal copper brass radiator. Now, someone needs to start an argument in the comments, aluminum or copper brass radiator. I'm talking dollar for dollar. This was 250 bucks. Obviously a $1,500 aluminum radiator is gonna be better, but no matter what you get, make sure it has the metal reservoir tanks on the sides. Factory, they're plastic and they can crack easily. And then you're doing this again. Let's get this new one in. New one ready. Again, make sure your condenser is lined up like I was showing you. You just line up the pins and it should just slide right in. And then like I was showing you up here, make sure the condenser gets lined up with the top tabs as well. Oh, look at that. The nut was on this side. It just uh, was underneath. What size are them suckers? 7 sixteenths. God. Oh, the black hole in the floor. You know what? One should be good. That's not wanting to go back on. Anyway, get these cooler lines snapped in. The bottom one just pushes right in till it clicks. Top one gets threaded in, same as before. Upper hose. Put the rubber pieces back on. I'm actually going to snug this down all the way before I forget about that later. And we'll put the lower hose back in while we still got some room. And then onto the water pump. Get that factory tension clamp slid back up. I know you're not supposed to, but I'm just gonna put a hose clamp on that. Shroud can come back on now. Got all of our hardware started. Now we can send them home. Radiator is now secure. I got the shroud back on and buttoned everything else up too. Air box is on, put all my zip ties on, the overflow line here, also the trans cooler line that mounts to the uh, bottom of the radiator. That's all good to go. Now we'll get it filled up with coolant and I'll show you guys how to bleed the system. Got our fancy funnel on here. This helps with bleeding it after we get it filled up. So we'll do that. Get our distilled water in there first. Then we can add a gallon of coolant concentrate for a 50-50 mix. And then we'll just let her drink it down until the bubbles stop coming out and then I'll uh, show you how to bleed it. All right, now that it kind of stopped, we're gonna turn on the Jeep. The coolant's gonna go through the system, through the water pump, through the engine. We're gonna need to keep adding fluid to this. We're just gonna keep the Jeep idling until all the air bubbles pretty much go away. <laughs> Now, once it gets up to operating temp and that thermostat opens up, it's gonna suck down a lot more. We're good. Uh, you heard me revving it there. That's just to help it along a little bit, get that water pump spinning a little bit faster. We got all the way up to temp, and once you see some dirty fluid starting to work its way back up, we're pretty well bled here, so that ought to do it. Plug the bottom, and we are done. I hope this video helped, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Take it easy, and I'll see you in the next one.